Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Gazzabee. Welcome back to the vlog. Very quick intro. We're back. We're at The Hustler. It's been a minute since I've played here. It's my favorite casino in the world to play poker because they were the first casino to let me vlog here in the, the US and we're here where we are because of them. So today is the second session of the trip. The first session the results are on your screen. Not off to the best of starts, but we're going to turn it around today. We're playing 5-5-10 at The Hustler. Let's jump in and play some cards. I'm excited for this one today. Let's do it. All right, guys, in we go. This is my first time playing at The Hustler since December last year, which is a real shame because I love playing here. Really happy to be back. We're playing 5-5-10 with a $1,500 cap, but the $20 straddle is going to be on for basically the whole day. We've got some familiar faces in the game today, none more so than HCL regular Jay Boog sitting opposite me. Really nice guy, and my god are we going to tangle today. Our first hand of the day comes 30 minutes into the session. I've got pocket threes in the cutoff, and I raise it on up to $50. Jay Boogs is going to make the call out the straddle. He says that he's desperate to make the vlog. I believe him when he says that. We go heads up to the flop. It is queen, eight, four, rainbow. I'm gonna see bet for $60 with my pair of threes and he makes the call. The turn is the ace of clubs bringing a flush draw. Decent card for me to keep barreling. I decide to bet again for $180. Very surprised to see my opponent fold a queen face up. He asked me to show a bluff. Who am I to say no to that? I of course show my pocket threes and he says wow okay nice hand. Not long later I've got pocket kings in late position. I raise it on up to $50, the small blind makes the call, and the straddle puts in the squeeze to $275, delighted to see that. The straddle's got like $1200-ish to start the hand, and the small blind has got like a thousand bucks. Obviously, if I put in a 4-bet, I don't think the small blind is going to continue here. But the question is, do we want to like min 4-bet here, or do we want to just go all in? I don't think I have a min 4-bet size, unless I've got pocket aces. I decide to just move all in, I don't think he's going to raise and then fold. Interestingly enough, the small blind now goes into the tank. He starts like humming and hawing and throwing his hands up in the air, kind of throwing a little bit of a tantrum. Really surprised to see him eventually decide to just slide his rack in. The straddle gets out of the way. I turn over my cards. I've got pocket kings, of course. He's got pocket jacks. And we're going to run it one time. The flop is about as bad as can be without a jack being on it. Managing to hold on the turn and hold on the river. Let's go. Really scary run out. I thought I was going to be just dead on the turn there. But my kings are good. They're going to hold. And we are up $1,725 after about 45 minutes of grinding. Like I say, really good game here today. As shown when I put on the $80 straddle. You guys, yeah, I thought I'd appealed six five suited and I would have played it, but I'll see. I thought it was six five suited, but it's not. I, I would play it as well. All right, my straddle here looking down at Pocket Kings for the second time today. I've got a feeling this is going to be a good day today. It folds all the way around to the middle blind. He's the guy that squeeze folded earlier. He raises it on up to $80. Action is on me here, and I'm, of course, going to put in the re-raise. I make it $250 to go, and he makes the call. Heads up to a relatively decent 9-8 deuce with a flush draw. Definitely want to see bet my hand here. I think we want to use a half pot size, so I bet $250. My opponent thinks for a few seconds and makes the call. The turn is the seven of spades, double flush draw on board now, and the stacked pot ratio is like 1.1. I think given how draw heavy the board is, the only play is to just go all in here which is what I decide to do. I fade the snap call, which is absolutely fantastic. My opponent is thinking about it for a few seconds, and now I really want to call. I look back at the board, though, and I realize something. The seven of spades is the seven of clubs. I cannot believe that I have misread the board and gone all in. My opponent is tanking here, and as he's doing so, I'm realizing what a massive mistake I've just made. I don't think he's got a flush, he would have called by now, but I would have never gone all in on a flush completing turn. I would have either bet really small or probably check back. My opponent shows his cards to the table. He's got Jack 10 offsuit. I know he's probably not folding this, so it's really, really painful. I do briefly try and like talk him into it and say, oh, Jack 10 might be good, but let's be honest, he's not folding. And sure enough, he does make the call. I say, yeah, you're good. I have literally 0% equity versus a straight. What's really funny is the king of clubs rolls off on the river and I'm just like, yeah, that wins nice hand. And everyone thinks I've just gone all in with a stone cold bluff. Like what hand could I have here that has equity that wants to shove maybe like ace 10 or something with the ace of clubs. 
But the club rolls off on the river and I'm just mucking my cards. I look like a total whale to the table. Completely my own fault. The board is three feet from my face and I thought the seven of clubs was the seven of spades. And I've cost myself a lot of money. But do you know what? All you can do is just forgive yourself and get on with the game. 10 minutes later, I've got ace four of diamonds in the straddle again. Middle blind calls, he's the guy that had jack 10. Big blind calls as well, and I of course put in the raise here in position versus two players, I make $100 to go. Middle blind is gonna make the call, and the big blind gets out of the way. We go heads up to the flop, 10, 9, 8 rainbow, not what we were looking for at all here. My opponent checks to me, and I decide to just go ahead and check it on back. The turn is the three of diamonds, bit of hope now. And my opponent bombs it. He bets out for $200. I'm in position, drawing to the nuts. I, of course, make the call. Can we get there? Nope, it's an offsuit nine. I triple check it to make sure it's not just like the deuce of diamonds and I can't read the board or something like that. But yeah, offsuit nine. He bets $600. I, of course, just fold. I have to step out for a little bit of air now, feeling a little annoyed at myself after that pocket king's hand a few minutes ago. I actually rant to the camera for about a minute about how much of an idiot I am, but you guys don't want to see that. Let's just skip that and move on to me talking about a very fun hand that I played just after the ace for a diamonds hand. So I've got King Jack off under the gun, I raise it on up to $50. I get four calls because we're in Los Angeles, we're not in London anymore. We go five ways to the flop, it comes down King 8-3. Good start with top pair. The guy who had the Jack-10 leads out for $125. I've probably gotten beat, but there's a few players behind. And as well as that, this guy's quite aggressive. He can just lead out with a bunch of air and stuff like that. So I decide to just flat. Uh, everyone else falls and we see the 10 roll off on the turn. He checks to me and clear value bet now, I bet out for $300. And after a few seconds, he makes the call. River is a nine. Don't love that river. Maybe he's got like queen jack. He's definitely capable of playing this hand weird like that. As well as that, he might have king nine. So when he checks me, I just check it on back. I announce king. He says, what's your kicker? I show and he says that's a good kicker and we scoop in the pot. But yeah, silly mistake, misreading the board. Out here taking a breath, I'll get back to it in a few seconds, just gonna kind of focus up and stuff like that. But it's, it's good, it's really good to be back here. I love playing here, it's one of my favorite places to play. Uh, so yeah, let's get back to it. Let's get back in there and redeem our, our, our misreading of the board. All right, back into my seat here, just in time to see the $160 straddle going on. Can we one time pick up a hand here? I like the jam, let's stick it in there. Oh, gamble. Really great game today, lots of gamble in it. I'm about even for the day, but I'm hoping that will change when I pick up Ace King offsuit in the middle blind. Cut off is raised to $60, the button calls, the small blind calls, and I may get $350 to go from the middle blind. Only one player is going to make the call. It's the guy that had the Jack-10 offsuit earlier. He calls on the button. Cannot beat him so far today, but hopefully this Ace King will do the job. We go heads up to the flop. It comes down Jack-5-5 five, five with two spades. Now, I do have the, the Ace of Spades working for me here and two over cards to the board. So I see bet for $300, hoping to just take it down now, but my opponent makes the call. Looking for a little bit of help on the turn, maybe a spade so I can keep barreling. It's an offsuit seven, not what I was looking for. I check it on over to my opponent. Happy to see him just check it on back. The river is an offsuit deuce. Nothing really changes. I think my hand is just a little bit too strong to bluff. So I check again. My opponent announces Jack. I say, yep, that's good. He turns over Jack eight offsuit. Was not expecting to see that. But as I say, yep, that's good. Cannot beat this guy so far today. But no matter, because a couple of minutes after this hand, I pick up pocket aces in the small blind. The $40 straddle is on. My man Boogs is driving the action today. I raise it on up to $125 when it folds around to me. A local pro by the name of Steve is going to put in the re-raise. He makes it $355 to go. Now we're about $1,500 effective here, so I can't like min four bet. It feels like we kind of, again, just have to go all in. I don't expect him to three bet and then fold versus a four bet here. So I do move all in. Not too happy to see him fairly quickly fold. Now, I think this is a bit of a misstep in hindsight. I'm not just saying that because he folded. I, I don't think we can min four bet, but I think we can flat. The SPR will be really low on the flop, and this player is definitely capable of having three bet folds in this spot, so I think flatting is by far the best play. A bit of a misstep, but hey, what can you do? All right, moving on now, I've got King 10 of hearts in the low jack. I raise it on up to $50. This small blind is going to make the call. The middle blind is Jay Boogs. He's going to put in the re-raise. He makes it $200 to go. I'm not going anywhere here in position for a 10 big blind squeeze. I make the call. The small blind calls as well, and we go three ways to 10 
3-3 with two spades. Decent start here with top pair. Jay Boogs is going to throw out a C-bet here. I'm, of course, not going anywhere with top pair. I go ahead and make the call. The small blind gets out of the way, and the turn is a very interesting offsuit three. I do have a full house here, but when the bet comes in again on the turn, I am very much worried about my opponent having over pairs still. I don't think we can fold just yet in position. He might just give up on the river. I'm, of course, not folding top boat here. So I go ahead and make the call. How about that? Another 10 rolls off on the river. That is an absolutely beautiful river. And after a few seconds, my opponent says three words that I was longing for him to say. Nope, not I love you. He says I'm all in. I snap call and he immediately says you're good. He tells me later that he had ace deuce of hearts for the stone cold bluff. What a river there though. It would have been a really gross spot if it's just like a four or something. And my opponent went all in. It takes me four minutes to stack up this pot. Fucking shoulder day at the Hustler Casino by the time that I'm finished. I'm now back up $2,000 for the day. Absolutely delighted with that. Let's kick on and have a really big day now. Next up, I've got pocket sixes on the button. No straddle for this hand. Boring old 5-5-10. Under the gun is raised to $30. Middle position calls. I call on the button and then the small blind puts in the squeeze to $180. Under the gun is going to make the call and I am of course calling as well here in position set mining with my sixes. It comes down 985 rainbow. No set for me but not the worst flop in the world. The small blind checks and under the gun is going to take a stab here for $240. This is a big stab. This dude has played relatively loose but relatively passively as well after the flop so I make a very tight fold here in position. Yeah we could go ahead and call and try and hit a six or a seven but i don't think we're getting the right odds here so i just go ahead and make the fold we've also got the guy behind to worry about what if like the small line check jams with an over pair or something like that so i do make a bit of a tight fold but i think it is the right one more small pocket pairs next up as we look down at pocket fours in the hijack i raise it on up to 50 dollars. the small bank calls and the straddle makes it 220 dollars to go i am again set mining i'm determined to flop a set today so I go ahead and make the call, expecting the small blind to come along for the ride as well, but he does just let it go. We go heads up to the flop. It is 3-3 three, three deuce rainbow. My pocket fours are somehow an overpair to the board here. My opponent bets out for $300, and I'm not going anywhere just yet. I make the call. The turn is a full rainbow nine, and the barrels keep coming, this time for $500. Bit of a gross spot. Do we want to continue here and see what he does on the river? Or do we want to just go ahead and fold? He's a very loose goose pre-flop, but not all that bluffy or all that aggro or crazy post-flop. So instead of being a hero here and calling him down, I just go ahead and fold. I think this is the right fold. And now all of a sudden, I'm only up $1,000 for the day. Just can't seem to kick on and be up like three or 4,000, but there's still plenty of time left. Let's keep it going. Next up, I've got Ace-10 offsuit in the small blind. The cutoff is raised to $75. Again, this is the guy that I've been battling against all day today, and I want to just get him. I go ahead and make a bit of a loose call out of the small blind here, and the straddle comes along as well. We go three ways to the flop. It is Ace. Ace, King, 10 with a flush draw, two pair, but on a very wet, very connected board. The cutoff is going to throw out a C-bet for $125. I think raising is fine here, but we got the straddle behind. There are lots of bad runouts out of position, and we could be behind. There are a couple of combos that beat us, so I decide to just go ahead and make the call here with my two pair. The straddle gets out of the way, and we see an offsuit five roll off on the turn, and now my opponent bets again, this time for $300. Is my hand strong enough to raise here? It's a pretty big bet. I don't think it's strong enough to raise i think just playing it safe and calling is the play here so i go ahead and make the call the river is a brick of all bricks it's an offset deuce nothing changes i check to my opponent he starts to turn his hand over he's got ace jack off suit no good buddy my two pair is best and i scoop in another nice little pot here now back up to 1860 dollars profit for the day we actually pay for another two hours where I go really card dead, barely playing any pots of note. In the end, the game is going to break. I tap the table, actually butchering recording the traditional walk to the cashier. So let's just go ahead and switch to the outro. All right, guys, GG the second session of the trip. Before we talk about it, facts and figures. For the day, I won $1,945. Let's go. For the trip, we're down $1,704. That's okay. Pocket pairs, uh, aces, threes, and deuces lead the way. I have not flopped a single set in two whole sessions of poker. That's standard, I guess. And today I tipped $20, which takes us up to $27 for the two days. I thought it'd be a little more than that, but whatever. As for the day itself, it was a lot of fun. A bit of a weird day. I misread the board, cost myself a lot of money. Won a couple of really nice pots. Jay Boogs tried to bluff me. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Um, I think I played quite well. I, again, if I didn't, you guys will tell me in the comments. If you enjoyed the show, click the sub button. 
Uh, and if not, please consider clicking it anyway. That's all from me. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.